Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. So as you know, this is my room. And in my room and in my home in general, I have been dreaming of having wooden beams. So like up here, above my bed, I want wooden beams. But the problem is I'm a renter. Wooden beams are heavy. How will I get them up and secured in a way that I'm comfortable with? Now, I have always just kind of assumed that wooden ceiling beams would only be for homeowners. And then when I thought about moving here, I just was like challenging myself over and over and over. Like, how can I do these wooden beams? How can I do these wooden beams? Like, I could not stop thinking about it. And I think I came up with a way. Now, just for context, throughout the several weeks that I spent thinking about this, I came up with many different ideas. And at the beginning, many of them were not plausible at all. But then when I was walking through Home Depot, I saw something really random, like window blinds that were in a box that was like about the size of beams. And then I Googled it and I found that there are boxes that come in almost the exact size that you would need and they're downstairs. So I'm gonna go pick them up right now. We're gonna turn some boxes into faux wood beams. boxes to look like wood with like a faux wood grain and then to attach those to the ceiling. I think it's genius if it will work out. I don't know. But if it doesn't work out, I mean, you can't win them all, but I'm just like hoping and praying here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put these all together. I think I have enough boxes with this one order of 10 boxes. I think I have enough to do four beams. Now just for size comparison of how tall this is, okay, I can't even see like the screen, but like it's tall, okay, I'm 5'8", so. Oh my god, how do I like straighten this out? What the heck? Now to just do this nine more times. Okay, I've just actually figured out a hack for this whole process that makes it way easier. Put your hand in, then push on it as you go, like so, and boom, you got it as a box. Put it down and step on. cardboard boxes to look like wood. I want to, I think, apply like a wood stain to it. Now, I actually did a little piece of test on cardboard and the tests that I did were straight up stain on the cardboard, straight paint, so just like acrylic paints, which I wanted to try because I know that that's non-toxic and I feel like that would be a little bit better. I also tested out putting down Mod Podge first to create a layer between the two, then applying the stain. 
and also the Mod Podge and then acrylic paint. Now, as much as all my experiments, you know, were fun and dandy and a good learning experience, what I deduced was that just putting a straight gel stain is what works the best. The Mod Podge didn't do a good thing for it. Um, and straight acrylic paint just looked a little prop-like. I didn't really like it. So, what I'm going to do is open the window, because you know, fresh air. I also will wear a respirator. It doesn't look pretty for my videos, but I really don't care. So I picked up a Varathane gel stain in Early American. This is a color I really like, but I've never used gel stain before this project. I'm really excited for this. I feel like the boxes, now that I'm seeing them, they look so good and I just feel like it's gonna work. It's gonna work. I, it's gonna, I have a feeling, okay? This works so worth it and I hope like some of you will actually do this too if it works because who doesn't want faux wood beams okay well no one wants faux wood beams but who wants real wood beams I do and the faux wood beams are what I'm gonna have to settle with okay so let's go Okay, so I need to take a little break because the mask that I've been wearing for now like over an hour is just like so tight on my face. So I'm gonna have to take a little breaks in between. And I thought that I would do something else that is productive. So you know I made my bedside tables an episode ago or two episodes ago. I really want to have some coasters to go on them so that I don't damage the finish at all. And I picked up these from Michaels and I think they're really nice. They were like $5 or something like that and they're ceramic. So, you know, good to go. And I thought I maybe wanted to do a little print on them and I brought my Cricut machine all the way from Toronto. So you can imagine how important my Cricut machine is to me because of all the things that I brought in the SUV that we rented, the Cricut machine made it. So <laughs> clearly I love it and I wanted to bring it. So um, Cricut is sponsoring this video. So thank you so much to Cricut for um, partnering with me on that. And I'm going to turn these coasters into a stunning printed masterpiece. So I have my laptop here and I just went ahead and went into Cricut's design space to pick out a couple different images that I think would look really nice. They have so many different types of images that you can pick from, from line art, boho prints, tribal prints, like everything that you could want. They also have so many different fonts and stuff like that. So I picked out some that I really, really like. I think that they're just really minimal. They match my style and I think they'll look really nice as a set as well. I'm using this white vinyl that's permanent and I've heard that you can use this on ceramics without like having to seal it either. Like it'll really stay on there as long as it's the permanent stuff. I've just pre-cut a few pieces and I'm going to just put them onto the mat. I'm just going to go ahead and hit make it. And it's cutting you guys. Let me show you. So I love Cricut and my machine specifically is the Explore Air 2 and I've been using it for so many different projects. I showed you once before I think that I had made like an art print which is really pretty and I also think I showed you how to make a shirt but that's just like a great example of the different type of things that you can make. You can make coasters, shirts, different printed things, you can put things on bags, art print, all different sorts of stuff that are all super easy to do as well. I know that a lot of people are like a little bit intimidated at the thought of using a smart cutting machine but like it's so easy and it opens up so many different opportunities for fun projects that you can do so I just highly recommend it. 
and that's why I brought this machine with me because it's just so important and fun to use and because of the different types of projects that you can take on it's such a good value for the investment that you're making in it and what's also cool is that you can start out with these really simple projects and then work your way up to more complex things or if you're like me you'll just start thinking of different ways that you can use it as well now I just love how my coasters turn out I think next I want to make a tea towel because I have some linen ones that I think would be really nice printed but that will be for a future project um, right now I feel like I should get back to staining the beans I do just want to say one more time thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video I love my Cricut machine the number of projects that I can do with it are just like you know so okay now back to the wood beams so let me explain how I really got this to look like wood I started off by applying a uniform coat of gel stain with paper towel, then I went in and added depth by applying more stain kind of randomly and blending it in as I went. I repeated that a bunch of times until there were all sorts of different shades going on. After that I continued on with detail work with some random techniques that I made up. To do wood knots for example, I kind of twirled my brush in a circle over and over. And then I continued twirling the brush away from the circle on either side like so. I probably did about three knots per side of the box and I varied their location as well. I also used my brush to shade in some areas and that gave it a really nice detailed texture and contrast. Another technique that I did was just twirling the brush up and down the beam in a vertical kind of way. And I also did straight lines up and down the beam as well, and both of those techniques really mimicked wood grain. Finally, I added in some dots here and there, and that is basically all that I did to achieve the full wood grain, using all random techniques that I made up, but you guys, it looks so real. Okay, so I've now left this to dry for like a while, two days, and look at how legit they look. I swear in person it's even better than on camera, but like you can just, everything just looks so real. So to mark off where I'm gonna put the beams here, I'm thinking I'm gonna do four, which means I split the room into five sections. I'm going to mark off with these little pieces of tape um, where those five sections are, and then I'm gonna put the beams up. This is my method. <laughs> do the dance you were just doing. Okay, so we have the little markers up here and in the center. And now what I'm gonna do is actually put the command strips on the bottom of the boxes. Now, I only actually painted the wood grain on three of the sides. One side I left empty because it's going to face the ceiling. So on that side is where I'm going to apply the command strips. my command strips here they are okay still a question mark in my mind as to whether these will stick properly to cardboard yeah, sleeping so <laughs> it's just cardboard So we're gonna hang the first beam. Two person job, I think. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah. 
Good morning, kind of, because this is what happened overnight, okay? Oh. Say it ain't so. So my husband heard a noise in the middle of the night and looked up, could see that it was like a little bit detached and we just pulled it down. Um, it was, it's always a question mark as to how command strips are gonna work on ceilings. Obviously, command strips are not meant for ceilings, they're meant for the wall. And it doesn't seem like for my ceilings, it's the most secure. I know that it doesn't always work the best on super flat paint. I would also recommend, if you're gonna try this and you wanna go just like the pure command strip route, I would recommend like wiping down your ceiling first. I didn't do that, but I know that that makes a big difference. This is right over where we sleep, so I don't really want boxes falling on us at night. So this is what I'm gonna do just to reinforce any beams that do fall or become loose. On the wall side, I'm going to put this L corner bracket, just angle it high enough so that the inside top of the box can sit on the L bracket. And then uh, on the other side, I am going to add a nail at an angle into the ceiling and that's going to make it just like extra secure. I'm going to leave the command strips up there for extra reinforcement. I also will just mention, so there's a little gap. Oh. There we go. There's a little gap on this side between the end of the box and the wall. Two options. I could just leave it um, with a little gap. It doesn't look weird at all. I have some extra boxes that I painted. So I think I'll just like cut a little piece of it and stick that up. So what we actually did for the other box that's open right here is we just tacked a nail at an angle. Can you see that? There's like a little nail right there. And we put it in at an angle. If you put it in straight, it will come right out. And we did one on the other end as well. And it's super secure. So that is the fix for those two. And then what we're gonna do, I think, so we installed that bracket there and that's perfect, super sturdy. And the box can slide right on that. And then to tack the other end, we're going to just bend the box so that we can reach in there and then install one more little nail at an angle and we'll be good. Okay, so these are currently looking like 9.5 out of 10. They are so good. But at the points where the two boxes meet, there can sometimes be a little bit of a gap because the boxes aren't like perfectly square. See that? See that? Whoa, that's close. So my plan is to wood fill it and then stain the wood fill. Should be really fast and easy, I hope. First, I gotta put my mask on. Hi, I'm using this stuff that's pink wood fill but turns into a wood color. So far, it's my favorite. So I'm just here minding my business doing the staining, but like, hello. Oh, and there's Perth walking home. Hello. And the deer just completely not phased. <laughs> and Perth doesn't see me. Hello, goodbye. Voila. So in three seconds, I'm going to open the door to my room and show you the grand reveal of the beams. Are you ready? Excuse me, what? You guys, this is like I woke up and now my apartment is in a different country. What is this? This is like beyond my dreams of what I thought was possible. And I just, I just love it so much. I just seriously love it so much. I've never been more proud of or more excited for a DIY in my entire life because this is something I literally thought was impossible. I thought I would not get the wood beams in my dreams until I had a house that I owned. Please. And honestly, even if this was a house that I owned, this looks exactly like real wood. Exactly. So good. 
this is just another level for me and I'm so, so grateful that I get to share it with you. So if you want your own wood beams, here you have it. You can have your own, okay? Wood beams, but make it cardboard. Sometimes life is about doing stuff like this. There's no practical, functional, need for it but it makes me happy and that is what homemade happy is all about so thank you so much for joining me on this week's journey and i'll see you next week please make sure that you're subscribed you know like comment all that good stuff follow me on instagram and i'll see you next week bye